Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Today we're going to have a short lecture on uh, the radial equation for the central force potential. So in the previous lectures we've discussed uh, the angular part of the, the angular equation for the uh, uh, central force potential um, and we saw that that led to um, quantization of angular momentum and two quantum numbers L which characterizes the total angular momentum and M sub L or M which characterizes the projection of the um, total angular momentum onto a one particular axis which we traditionally call the z-axis. So today we'll talk about the radial equation um, and um, and we'll continue with this uh, in the next lecture. So this will be a rather short lecture. Okay so recall um, that we have for a central force, that is for a force which uh, whose magnitude depends only on the distance um, of the particle from a fixed origin um, and where the direction of the force is along, is, is when the force is directed along the line that separates the particle from the, from the origin, um, that's sort of the definition of a central force. So for a central force we can break the Schrodinger equation into uh, radial, um, a radial part and an angular part. Again, we've already solved the angular part, and here's the radial part. Um, r, remember, is just a big R is just a function of little r, just a function of the distance from the origin, and um, and so we have this rather complicated um, looking differential equation, uh, and it's in the end it's equal to uh, a constant. Remember, we know that L is a quantum number again that characterizes the total angular momentum. Okay, so um, so we have that the total wave function psi of r theta and phi in polar coordinates is equal to the product of the radial part and the angular part of the wave of the wave function. Okay, so now we can great we can simplify this uh, radial part. Okay. Uh, by making a substitution, uh, we can call mu of r uh, the product of the position r, the radial position r times the function big R. And um, when we do that, then we then this equation. It can be shown that this equation, the radial equation, uh, simplifies to this form. Okay, minus h bar squared over two m d squared mu of r now dr squared plus u of r plus h bar squared over 2m times l times l plus 1 over r squared times mu of r is equal to e times mu of r. So if you look at this, this looks basically like the Schrodinger equation in one dimension with an effective potential, okay, instead of just having a, the potential u of r multiplying uh, the, the function, uh, the, the solution, then there's <clears throat> then there's an effective potential which is composed of the normal uh, potential energy function u of r and um, another term which characterizes basically the uh, centrifugal effect okay so it can be uh, if you look at this h bar squared over 2m times l l plus 1 divided by r squared um, L, L plus 1 times h bar squared, this is just equal to the total angular momentum squared. We showed in the, in the previous lecture that L times L plus 1 <coughs> square root of L times L plus 1 times h bar is equal to big L, the angular momentum. So this is equal to the angular momentum squared. And 2mr squared um, is equal to 2 times the moment of inertia. So I here is the moment of inertia. Um, of a particle uh, a distance r, a little r, away from a fixed point, okay, from a fixed origin. And that's basically just comes from classical mechanics, okay. And so we see that this term here characterizes the centrifugal effect um, uh, of a particle orbiting um, in a central force, 